This is the story of Curtis the Curlew and his epic migration from Russian Siberia to the shores of Roebuck Bay in Broome. Curtis's story, The Shorebird Quest, was set on the mudflats of Roebuck Bay at low tide. Curtis and the creatures from the bay were brought to life with the use of giant, illuminated puppets and live music. The show was conceived to highlight concerns about habitat loss for Broome's shorebirds along their international flyway. The star of the show, Curtis, is an eastern curlew, which is now listed as critically endangered. The eastern curlew is probably the most charismatic of the shorebirds in the bay. It's the biggest, so it's the most visible. Um, it has a ridiculously long down curved bill. There's another one called a whimbrel that has a down curved bill that's long as well, um, but that's just a long down curved bill. This is ridiculous. My name is Curtis, I'm a load of scenes. I don't know if I got family, but... When you've got the main characters being, being non-humans, being animals, you anthropomorphise them, so you make them, you, so that humans can identify them on a human level. It helps people to sort of project their own sort of fears and desires and love and concern. So that was always a really important part in giving these birds, which we decided would be eastern curlews because they are critically endangered, giving them, yeah, like a really clear identity. Puppets work on lots of different levels. So you've got your small puppets and you've got your really big puppets. Part of it is the creation of them, the artist, artistry in them. Um, people are amazed, like, oh my goodness, somebody's made that. It's very, they work on that very human level. It's not something that's been created by a machine. There's, there's faults with them. They're, you know, they're, not, they're imperfect and that's what makes them so beautiful. And then on the big scale, like we saw at Town Beach, uh, the spectacle of it, the lights, the reflections on the mud, the whole community participation. The shows like the Shorebird Quest really um, give that excuse for people to come out and, and um, celebrate. When you're operating a puppet with other people to bring this, this other creature alive, because you do, it's this, it's this awesomeness. You become part of something bigger than yourself. And then to bring that magic to other people and lift them out of the ordinary and to see something of this scale on such a beautiful um, environment and a beautiful part of Broome, again, just transports people into something else. It also makes people engage with their own environment very differently and to remember that place and remember the story and what's embedded there. So everyone will have a memory of them in that space long after we've gone. The Giant Puppets were um, like a huge team effort, basically. Um, we had a lot of people working on them. A lot of, yeah, people who'd never made Giant Puppets before who came in and uh, were part of the workshops and learned how to build in different ways. I guess the trickiest thing was that we had to start rehearsals uh, two weeks in, into the making. So people were rehearsing with the puppets. At, the puppets were skeletons, essentially. They were like... They were just frames with the movable parts. And gradually, as the weeks went by, I see them like suddenly they've got like a new head attachment and suddenly they've got uh, a beak and suddenly they've got this and that, like now they've got skin and oh, now they've got lights. And the way they came together in teams was incredible. Yeah, I'm a polyky. We may never for the Shorebird Quest was written in response to the storyline. For the most part, the scripting session happened first and then the music was written after that. Um, and the Benthic Boogie um, was really important to me because it was, um, I think, think, in the message of shorebird conservation, one of the most important things, or possibly the most important thing, is the idea that mud is intrinsically valuable. Great, 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 
because it's mudflat reclamation, taking you know what we never actually really owned as land from the sea and making it into land, and in that process completely destroying habitat and losing all of the benthic life that the shorebirds feed on and need to feed on on their major stopovers in the Yellow Sea. Um, means that we've had a massive crash in the population of these species. I'd say the key message that came along from the shorebirds quest was the importance of the mudflats and how we need to protect them and showing that it's not just uh, mud out there, it's invertebrates, it's birds, it's all a wide array of animals and sea life that exist out there that rely on us to protect them. As a, as a ranger and as a Yarra person, it's our job to be custodians of the area and taking care of the mudflats and Roebuck Bay and all, all Yarra country, because in turn it cares for you. Shorebird conservation is very much an international effort. Um, you need to have all of these different cultures, especially in our flyway where we're so diverse, um, to communicate and to work together for a common goal. And it is very much like it's all about protecting the whole so that you can you know, protect these, these birds um, and maintaining the ecological and cultural integrity that is in Roebuck Bay is such, um, such an important thing to the survival of these species.